It's taken for granted in the modern world of science that ancestral fish appeared in a primeval ocean, then crawled out of the water and became amphibians. Amphibians changed into reptiles and reptiles into mammals. Evolutionists claim that other reptiles shed their scales, grew feathers, and took to the skies to become birds. But reptiles and birds are very different. Reptiles have no genetic information for wings or feathers. To change a reptile into a bird would require the addition of huge amounts of complex information. Darwin reasoned that, with a bit of luck, the accumulation of enough small changes could even turn reptiles into birds. Michael Denton says it cannot be done. One can quote lots of examples in the biological realm of things which seem, as it were, beyond the reach of that simple Darwinian mechanism. There's things like the avian lung, there's the feather, there's the amniotic egg, bacterial flagellum. I mean, really a vast number of systems which have that unique watch-like sort of complexity that you found in nature, where in fact, to have the system functioning, you need A, B, C, D, so forth, all in place, interlocking like together, before the thing will function. It's very difficult to see how those sorts of things were, were arrived at undirected, by undirected processes. I mean, you could take the feather, for example. The flight feather is a very complicated structure of tiny interlocking hooks and barbules which hold the, um, the, the parts of the feather together. And uh, it's, it's these tiny little micro-adaptations within the feather which give it its, um, it, which adapt the feather for flight. And uh, the Darwinian model of evolution requires that the intermediates are fully functional. And I can't imagine how you can get to such ends uh, th without having to sort of go through structures which are really not, not functional uh, in some sense, in some biological sense. Reptiles and birds also have totally different reproductive and respiratory systems. In reptilian lungs, air passes in and out of only one tube, which ends in tiny air sacs. But in birds, the air flows continually through the lungs in one direction, through a complex system of interconnected air sacs, connected up with its hollow bones. Darwinists claim that reptilian lungs changed into birds' lungs through a lot of intermediate stages. But Michael Denton says half-formed lungs won't work because of the transitional form cannot breathe. Any intermediate stage would result in extinction of the species. Well, the avian lung is an example, um, like the living cell or like the feather, of a, a highly complicated system, very, very involved, very complicated, which, as far as I can see, you can only conceive of it functioning as a, for um, a respiratory gas exchange. Um, if the whole current structure and order of it is in place. It's one of the toughest examples in nature of a highly complex system composed of a whole lot of interacting components, all of which must be there as they are in every single bird's lung before the thing would function. In the case of the avian lung, this is, for me, um, a very tough nut for Darwinian, Darwinists to crack, because I mean, I can't imagine how um, that sort of the lung and other, and, and other analogous things like it could come about as a result of the accumulation of small random changes. For simple life forms to evolve into more complex ones requires a massive input of new information. A microbe has about two books of 500 pages of complex coded genetic information on its DNA. A human has the equivalent of at least 1,000 books to transform a microbe into a human means adding a whole library of new information. So where does this new information come from? Professor Werner Gitt is a specialist in information theory and a director at the Federal Institute of Physics and Technology in Brunswick, Germany. He says the evolution of complex life forms from simpler ones by selection of lucky improvements is impossible because there is no source of new information. The biggest problem in evolution is the origin of information. Where is the information coming from? It is impossible to come from a simple uh, living being uh, to, 
to an elephant or to a human being. It needs uh, very much more information. And information cannot come in by a random process. Darwinists say the new information comes from genetic mutations that are passed on from one generation to the next. Genetic mutations are random errors, rather like mistakes made when copying a text. According to evolutionists, the most favorable of these mutations are preserved by natural selection.